Welcome back to part two. If you missed the first video, we left off where we realized that we had to teach Monty how to be calm on cue. Which can be pretty challenging with a military macaw. They're one of the harder species in our experience to work with, but I think even the hardest species <laughs> was Z, and also <laughs> getting her to realize when she was triggering this overheightened behavior in Monty. So I would say that was even harder to untrain. So are we trying to train the military macaquatoo <laughs> or the human here? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Dave kind of initiated this session to see if we could start out with the right calm demeanor. <laughs> but we got Z. <laughs> so we all love know. Love you, Z. <laughs> we all know how that went. We love you, Z. We set us up for success. Mm -hmm. I just want everyone to be chill. <laughs> no, you can stay there. All right. Going for my thumb. Really? Yeah. Battery just. Yeah, there we go. Move my thumb twice. Okay. Looks like a pretty gentle treat. Nice, nice. I'm really? taking the treat, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know, I don't know. He's making it look good. Here, I'm gonna put it here. There you go. <laughs> Him? Oh, you actually got it. Oh, ready? Put it around. Hey. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> you call that calm? <laughs> so I want to try an experiment. I want to have, I want to have you be just out of view, and once you're out of view for like two minutes, then Josh, I want to see what your interaction looks like, and then after each time he does a click and a rep, I want you to step into view, and the next rep, step a, a big step closer, a big step closer, and I want to see at what distance your presence changes that balance on your own, he's fine, you said, yeah? You guys wanna try that? Mm -hmm. And so let's just do targeting through the cage. He's, I'm guessing he's gonna be more receptive to you. If we start this and he's not receptive, then we'll just stop for a bit. In a master class that we did down in Salt Lake City, Utah, or Sandy to be sp specific, at Ronnie's for Love of Birds, we noticed that this one military macaw didn't, uh, didn't respond to food. And we had a small three to four hour window to train this bird. And in that period, we were able to train the bird to do a spin on cue without using a single treat just by us cueing people to move and enter and exit the room. So in this situation, I thought I'd kind of revert back to that and try a little experiment by involving both Josh and Z and kind of manipulating the situation to where we used a little bit of loss of a reward. And it can kind of show you how your behavior truly influences the behavior of your bird. And one thing that I want you guys to all really pay attention to is listen to Monty. He is heightened and you can tell by his vocalization after every single repetition. And this is why in the family friendly parrot formula and our, our entry level course, why we really stress that each and every single every single interaction is a training session. You're either increasing good behavior or increasing bad behavior. Look what we're about to do. Even using his tongue. Yeah, and he's not shaking his head. <laughs> Alright, so is he going down right there? Still looks really nice to me. Alright, so we're gonna take one more step more. Don't treat, don't treat. 
So I wanna preface this with I didn't have the right camera angle yet, but I promise that's coming and we do show you like the entire room perspective. But to start, it's just this initial up close with Monty so you can really see how his behavior changes as Z gets closer. So keep in mind, Z and Dave are on the other side of the room. Dave is telling Z how close to move in or when to back off. And I want you guys to be able to pay attention and see how that is actually influencing Monty's behavior towards Josh. So to start this experiment out, I wanted to make sure that we were getting calm targets on cue with Josh. So that again, going back to what we talked about a lot, we're pairing that emotional state at the time that that behavior is happening. So while he touches the stick, since Target had been previously very calm, we want to really cement that into Monty's mind that calm and Josh, that's all kind of going to be the same thing. So we started with Z around the corner and every time he, um, Josh would click and give a treat, then we would have Z take a small approximation, a small step forward where just her head's visible and then a little bit more of her body was visible with each and every single successful repetition. Then we added another layer to this, kind of a different dynamic, and every time Monty started to be aggressive towards Josh because of having Z now in that room and in that environment, we actually started to back Z up. So anytime Monty was aggressive to Josh, now it was equaling Z getting further away as well. So we were kind of doing a combination. There was just an added layer to the dynamic of this entire session. So one of the things that a lot of people overlook is that they think that when their bird talks, it's really cute because the bird loves them or some other human emotion that we assign to it. Well, the reality is that most birds learn to talk at a heightened emotion. It doesn't always mean they love you. Sometimes it means that they hate you. So when they say hello or goodbye or well, I won't say it here as a family, <laughs> uh, family show, but they'll, they might swear at you, but uh, usually talking behaviors are a heightened state of emotion or in this case could be in a, a sign of aggression. So I know this doesn't look like a ton of progress, but keep in mind before we got here for this in-home consult, they could not interact with Monty in the same room together. So it was a really big deal to get this achievement where Z was even just a little bit in the room while Monty was uh, basically interacting with Josh in a positive, calm way and not showing those aggressive behaviors. Two things I wanna point out, one is that when they did have Monty out and Josh entered the room, Monty would slide down the perch, jump off the perch, and chase him out of the room. And if he didn't retreat, he would just tear him apart. So the second part I really wanna point out is we did the training in the cage because we can really control how aggressive Monty is because he can only reach so far through that cage bar 
which limited the amount of likelihood that Josh would get bitten or that there would be an aggressive, aggressive behavior paired with him learning these things and also just gave us the control of the situation to set us up for success. And keep in mind, this was session one of three. So we only got a total of three sessions in this day. And this was only the progress from the first session. So super excited to show you guys what happens later. But while giving birds breaks in between sessions, we talk concepts and we talk training and we just talk all the things, especially plans for after we're gone. And so I thought that you guys would really enjoy hearing some tidbits from that. All right, so I thought this next part was also a good reminder for those of you that haven't heard us talk about the birdie bubble. We obviously don't talk about each and every concept in each and every video, so you <laughs> kind of get tidbits from each video. Um, but the cool thing was you also got to hear how this training what it's going to look like when it progresses outside of the cage because i know that a lot of people are probably going to get a little wrapped up in the fact that this is happening with the bird in the cage and how do you get past that how do you eventually let monty out and so i wanted to make sure that you guys got to hear us touch on that um then the last thing of, if you probably heard us talk about the birdie bubble yep. um and that have you heard about this at all a little bit yeah so the concept is like we're having a conversation we're training we're training we're training Okay, we're no longer engaged in that conversation. Yeah. And so if you're like, if you got the target stick and you're like, yeah, but hey, so next time do this, the bird's gonna, you, especially this one, you're mm -hmm. done. You get one failure, you're done. It'll mm -hmm. start climbing down. So if you're not in that conversation, you gotta step back and mm -hmm. like have the brief conversation because he's, you'll lose him fast. Okay. So I think really the solutions right now are doing this through the cage yeah. and then once we get it to where you can do this gently through the cage which we should make i'd love to see today having you be like here you know and we might even get that because okay. it's going to be even more drastic when he's aggressive and you totally leave mm -hmm. it's going to sink in more okay but then i think we'll be able to get him to the point where once he associates that you training means mm -hmm. his favorite words either entering or leaving mm -hmm. he's going to get good fast you're about to watch the second session of three that day. Now we realized early on in the day that we weren't going to get a lot of repetitions at Monty. So we had to approach this a little bit differently. In most of my one-on-one -on -one consultations, whether by video or in person, I always say whenever you hit a failure point, go back to where you're last successful and rebuild the steps from there. But today, knowing we would only get two, maybe three sessions, I had to play a little bit differently. So this time I wanted to start where they left off and that's a lot further ahead than we would normally do. So we sat down and we had an action plan for if he does worse, then here's what we'll do. If he does better, we'll push as fast and as hard as, as we can within Monty's limits, not what we want, but what Monty's willing to accept. And you're gonna be shocked by what you see next. This was literally the highlight of everyone's day. subtle tip when you're given a treat, try not to have the stick in that mm -hmm. same okay. okay. Over time, it, with, with an adult bird, if yeah. they think target or treat target, you, know, they can, you can lose them because they get pissed off. Okay. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and take a big step forward. Yeah, all right, hold there. All right, so earlier I talked about how we were changing up the dynamic and adding some layers of putting Z forward as a treat, but also removing her if Monty was ever aggressive to Josh. You will notice I sped up this session so that you guys could really get through it. <laughs> However, uh, we only had to back Z up one time. The rest was progression. Like, look how close we got Z to Josh, to Monty. The whole thing, I mean, that progress was like, just amazing. We were so, so happy.
In training, it's always important to leave the bird wanting more, and one of the best tools you have is by giving a huge reward. However, knowing we would have a third session, we didn't want to give a huge jackpot reward. So if you go back to what our family-friendly parrot formula talks about, just understanding what the quadrant is about, I thought, what the heck, let's go ahead and give the number one reward, the highest reward, better than any treat that Monty could have, and that was letting Z go give attention to him. Cool. You guys are both really intuitive to his mm -hmm. subtleties. Huge yeah. improvement from the first rep where it was like, he's like, I'm okay, I hate you, I'm okay, I kill you, you know, and now you could actually get up almost shoulder to shoulder. So as you can see, this second session was awesome. We killed it, it was phenomenal, and it was huge steps forward. Again, looking back to what their regular interactions were, they couldn't even both be in the same room without Josh being murdered by this bird. So that was session two. I wanna hear what your thoughts are in the comments below on what you think's gonna happen on session three. Stay tuned to find out. <laughs>